Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture. The topic is hyperplastic and neoplastic disorders of the oral cavity. So for this topic we will have two lectures. My name is Dr. Ajay. So at the outset I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Vinay Marla. Uh, some of whose slides are in content I have actually incorporated in this presentation. So the learning outcomes for this topic are as follows. At the end of the topic, the student should be able to identify and describe hyperplastic lesions of the oral mucosa. Name one benign and connective tissue tumor involving fibrous tissue, adipose tissue, vascular tissue, peripheral nerves and muscles. Describe in brief the clinical features of common hyperplastic and neoplastic disorders. Illustrate the histopathology of biogenic granuloma, peripheral ossifying fibroma, peripheral giant cell granuloma, fibroepithelial polyp, lipoma, hemangioma, neurilemoma, neurofibroma, and fibrosarcoma in brief. So let's look at uh, the two main terminologies that we will be uh, discussing in this, on, in this topic. So first of all, the first terminology is hyperplasia. So hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells in an organ or tissue. Now these cells appear normal under a microscope. They are not cancer, but may become cancer, right? So this is an infographic from uh, uh, Google Images wherein you can clearly see what is normal cells and uh, how does hyperplasia look. So hyperplasia basically is increase in number of cells in organ or in a tissue, right? So if you've been following uh, the lectures that we have taken in the past, one place where we have used the term hyperplasia is when we have been discussing uh, dysplastic features and one of the dysplastic features that we have discussed is basilar hyperplasia. So again there basal cells which is uh, usually one layer in the epithelium when there is a double layer that means when there is an increased number of cells uh, we call that hyperplasia. So there in that case basilar hyperplasia if this same thing happens in any other organ or tissue it would be called that hyperplastic tissue all right so next is neoplasia neoplasia i'm sure you're all aware is an abnormal mass of tissue the growth of which exceeds and is uncoordinated with that of normal tissue and persists in the same excessive manner after cessation of the stimuli that evoke the change now this is a very uh, standard and a well widely used definition of neoplasm and um, which clearly uh, explains to us what exactly is neoplasm and how it's different from, from hyperplasia, right? So what exactly happens in neoplasm is that uh, there is an uncontrolled growth and this uncontrolled growth continues to take place uh, even after uh, the stimuli that, that, uh, that initiated this growth is removed. So that is the difference. So it's uncontrolled growth or an abnormal mass of tissue, right? Whereas hyperplasia is normal uh, looking cells, but abnormal number, right? So that's the main difference. Okay, so let's look at epulis or epulites. Okay, so as I mentioned, they are localized tumors uh, like gingival enlargements. Okay, they mostly arise uh, from interdental tissue. Uh, etiology is trauma and chronic irritation due to sub, sub gingival plaque and calculus. Um, and they are hyperplastic, they are not neoplastic. Right, so this is the category which I had just described. Right, so let's look at fibrous epulis. So, fibrous epulis, as the term goes, okay is basically a gingival growth which is composed of basically fibrous tissue all right so clinically it presents as a nodular growth on the gingiva 
okay which may be pedunculated or sessile i'm going to explain what pedunculated and sessile is right after on the in the next slide okay these are firm uh, in consistency due to the large amount of collagen obviously there's fibrous tissue fibrous uh, fibroblasts pro produce collagen and that's why the lesion is firm they're usually pink color usually similar to the edges in gingiva and the surface of the lesion may or may not be ulcerated okay there is a female predilection that has been noticed in uh, fibrosopolis right what exactly is pedunculated and sessile right now this is uh, an and this is a very beautiful uh, diagrammatic representation, you know, an infographic of, of basically uh, a growth. So if this, we, if we identify, uh, I mean, imagine this to be, uh, let me just get my pointer on. Yeah, if you just imagine this to be mucosa, then a growth like this, which has a broad base attached to the mucosa, then that would be sessile uh, growth. Okay, in this case, a polyp here. Whereas when you have a polyp that is actually growing out of the mucosa with an attached stalk, something very similar to a bunch of grapes, then you call it pedunculated. All right. So when you compare pedunculated versus sessile, what do they mean? So sessile is uh, when a plant or animal structure attached directly by its base without a stalk or a pedunculated or a peduncle. But a pedunculated is when there is a peduncle. Okay. Uh, same thing all right most of these sessile uh, lesions are flat whereas pedunculated lesions are mushroom like okay sessile lesions are difficult to diagnose whereas pedunculated lesions are easy to die easy to diagnose as they are raised from the surface uh sessile lesions can be cancerous and they uh they, they need to be uh identified with caution whereas pedunculated clearly have a low risk okay and are surely benign Okay, so that's the importance of this uh, descriptive term. Epilis, as I've said, so the term itself clearly tells us epilis means it's on the gingiva, right? And fibrous means there's a lot of fibrous tissue. So histopathology, if you're going to excise this entire lesion, what are you going to see? You're going to see an overlying epithelium, right? Uh, Pericretinized epithelium because that's the normal epithelium of the gingiva. Varying amounts of richly cellular fibroblastic tissue interlacing bundles of collagen fibers and variable inflammatory cells so in this particular slide what we can see is all this pale pink structure that you are seeing between these uh, cells are basically the collagen fibers okay now sometimes you have fibrous epilis with calcifications okay fibrous epilis, epilis with calcifications so we have uh, so this is a picture to show you that so basically this is paracaritinized epithelium so it's again this lesion is excised from the gingiva you're seeing proliferation of collagen fibers within the fibrous tissue but deep down you are seeing uh, irregular trabeculae of woven bone okay uh, showing osteocytes with lacunae and lined osteoblasts okay so these are called fibrous uh, apolis with calcifications or the other term that is also used to describe them is peripheral ossifying fibromas okay so both terms are interchangeable okay now the treatment for these lesions okay is surgical excision of the growth and oral prophylaxis so oral prophylaxis is something very important because the etiology for most of these lesions is calculus and plaque right so unless we remove the calculus and plaque uh, these lesions will recur right so to achieve good prognosis it's very important to to excise the lesion uh, and before before excising the lesion you actually do oral prophylaxis yeah so that's the other term called peripheral ossifying fibroma uh, i'm sorry proliferation of endothelial cells and sheets of budding numerous plump endothelial cells are seen and uh, there is a fibrous stroma with varying degrees of inflammation is uh, the histopathology so you've seen the overlying epithelium here this area here is ulcerated okay how do i know this is ulcerated because you're not seeing the epithelium with the reti pegs over here but dense inflammatory cells other than that all these white spaces that you're seeing correlate to high power view of the vascular spaces okay and the blue dots that we see are the inflammatory cells so what is the treatment again the treatment is uh, surgical excision of the growth and oral prophylaxis to remove the irritating, irritating factor and prevent the recurrence okay okay so let's look at giant cell epilis or peripheral giant cell granuloma first of all it, the etiology is unknown okay it's been attributed to irritation due to again plaque and calculus 
uh, or poorly um, done dental restorations which have uh, overhangs or have sharp edges or an ill-fitting appliance. It can, it can occur at any age, it's common in females. Uh, usually the lesion is asymptomatic and rapidly growing. So it occurs on the gingiva, it may be pedunculate to the sessile, you know that. Uh, dark, red, vascular or hemorrhagic. So uh, this is a case here wherein there is an interdental, uh, there is a growth on the gingiva, okay, interdentally in mandibular anterior region, okay. And, uh, this lesion actually turned out to be a peripheral giant cell granuloma, okay. Uh, so basically it's a non, histopathologically what we see is a non-encapsulated mass composed of reticular and fibrillar connective tissue multiple uh, multinucleated giant cells. This is what is uh, pathognomic here. Dilated capillaries, foci of hemorrhage, hemosiderin and uh, giant cells which have been proved to be So this is how it looks. Again, we're able to see the epithelium here. We're able to see these giant cells. Okay, these are the giant cells that we're talking about. Uh, under high power view, this is how they look. This is hemocytrin, the brown color pigmentation, that uh, pigment that is seen here in the connective tissue. These red structures that you are seeing are extravasated RBCs, and this is how uh, peripheral giant cell granuloma looks. Right? The treatment is the same. Right? So that's the uh, arrow that shows us the giant cell. So the treatment is again similar to all the other uh, epulis, surgical excision of the nodular growth down to the periosteum to prevent recurrence and oral prophylaxis to remove the uh, etiological factors or the irritation factors which are actually leading to this hyperplastic growth, right? Okay, so moving on, uh, the next lesion is fibroepithelial polyp and uh, these are uh, common oral lesions that occur on uh, wide age, uh, age range. Okay, they commonly uh, occur on, along the occlusal line. Okay, these are growths, hyperplastic growths on, along the occlusal line, which are commonly which commonly occur uh, due to trauma or irritation. Okay, so commonly seen on the buccal mucosa, they are painless, firm, pink, pedunculated, or sessile swellings. Right, similar to this that you can see here. So the etiological uh, factor here in this particular case could be this uh, sharp edge of this uh, decayed tooth, which could be uh, where the patient actually is chew, uh, chronically cheek biting and it's led to this hyperplastic lesion. Right, so what happens when we actually excise this lesion? What do we see microscopically? Well, we see dense acellular fibrous tissue, right? Something like scar tissue, thick interlacing bundles of collagen fibers, Fibroblasts are scanned, although plump and angular, and uh, the overlying epithelium may show atrophic changes, right? So this is where there's atrophic changes here, but in this slide here, the epithelium is, is, is normal. You're seeing a large amount of uh, fibroblasts and collagen, collagen bundles in the slide. So again, this is a hyperplastic lesion, okay? Commonly secondary to trauma and irritation along the occlusal line, okay? So the treatment is surgical excision and removing of the, uh, the, the causative factor. Okay, so here in this case um, would be the sharp, sharp uh, edge of the tooth. Okay, so if uh, a lesion of fibroepithelial polyp actually occurs under a denture bearing area, commonly uh, on the palate of, uh, of a denture user, then it's called it is described, it, it, it presents itself as a leaf-like fibroepithelial polyp, okay, uh, and it's actually called a leaf-like denture fibroma, okay. This is again due to chronic irritation of the denture, and this is a hyperplastic lesion, and uh, shows no, uh, no malignant transformation, and is because of trauma and irritation, okay. Right, so the other lesion is denture irritation hyperplasia or denture induced hyperplasia. Okay, so these are hyperplastic mucosal overgrowths that are associated with uh, ill fitting dentures, right? And uh, they present as firm leaf like uh, uh, swellings, usually on the labial and the vestibular sulci embracing the denture flanges, right? So, here in this case, as you're seeing, uh, you are able to see this uh, leaf-like folds of tissues uh, in the vestibule right here in this the maxillary vestibule here 
uh, in the mandibular lower vestibule here okay so uh, they're also called equilis fissuratum okay on their hypoplastic tissue as as we as outlined previously they form in consistency the common commonly seen in the mandibles in females and uh, the gray the, the growth uh, embraces the overextended flange of the denture so again the etiology is associated with uh, ill-fitting denture so what we need to do here is to remake the denture and uh, first of all excise this lesion uh, allow the lesion to heal and then uh, redo the denture of these okay lastly uh, the lesion that we are going to discuss is called papillary hyoplasia of the palate okay so this is the clinical presentation of papillary hyoplasia of the palate okay so this condi condition presents on the heart palate usually seen in the middle age to elderly female patients almost uh, invariably, invariably under an ill-fitting uh, upper denture okay so it's usually seen in the palate the exact etiol etiology is not not known but it is thought that chronic trauma uh, from a rocking denture predisposes uh, to to this uh, development of these lesions patients usually give the history of wearing the uh, prosthesis while sleeping uh, and uh, clinically there are multiple pinpoint projections on the anterior um, heart palate okay which is what we can see in this clinical picture right and uh, uh, this this hyoplastic lesion is frequently associated with uh, candidal overgrowth, right? With candidal overgrowth, so uh, these lesions present uh, as uh, or present in association with candida, and thus the treatment that is done here in these particular patients is basically uh, the patient is advised to remove the dental appliance at night and to practice appropriate oral and denture hygiene measures and uh, topical fungal therapy is used to treat the underlying candidal infection and of course the surgical excision of this papillary lesion is done and then uh, the fabrication can be done okay so if you if we actually um, excise when we excise this lesion and send it for to the lab what we actually see are numerous papillary projections each comprising of a core of hyperplastic uh, hyperplastic chronically inflamed granulation tissue right so this is the papillary projection this is the core of uh, chronically inflamed granulation tissue and uh, these are lined by stratified squamous epithelium which you can see here right and we see something called as uh, pseudo epithelium mantis hyperplasia which is what you see over here all right and obviously heavy chronic inflammation secondary to the trauma that is being caused by the ill-fitting denture right so this brings us to the end of the uh, my lecture on hyperplastic uh, lesions of the oval cavity. Thank you.